What is going on my friends and welcome back to another video on the channel. Well in today's video we are looking at Decentraland's mana as the price has gone into some type of downtrend slash pullback over the last 48 hours. Now in the last video we were right back here and we were basically just saying in that video that there was a good chance that we saw some type of pullback happen right. We had bought the breakout back down here on that live stream from a few days ago. Many people were asking me at this point is it too late to buy and what I said was look if you missed the the breakout and the price is absolutely flying sometimes it's best to just simply let it slow down let your indicators cool off and let this thing come back down to some key support levels before trying to get in because likelihood is there is a chance of that pullback happening at some point off of all these big green candles and what we can see is that even though the price did you know eventually go back up and people were commenting see it continued to go up uh, get ratioed you know what I mean all these good things we actually ended up seeing the price just coming right back down finding some support and we're back to square one one, okay but now the difference is instead of buying at this point in which you know we're overextended on many indicators we're looking at a better opportunity here now that we're looking at some support establishment and indicators showing bullishness okay so with that being said what do we need to see from mana right now in order for us to be confirming that it is now the time to be getting in well what we need to do is we need to zoom out to the four hour charts and kind of just look at what's happening that's sometimes the best thing to do is let's just see what is happening and what we can see happening is that of course we had this breakout to the upside from this descending wedge okay now that's a very very bullish and positive thing not only that though we saw the formation of a bit of a w pattern here as we did see the breakout to the upside so now inherently since we did have this midline right here where the w the middle of the w came up to set this resistance that's going to be a key level of resistance and support on both sides okay so what we know is that we automatically have this one key level of support we know we have a key level of support, not surprisingly, at a strong psychological level of $3. So now what we know is that as long as we're above $3, we can still be looking at the continuation to the upside, considering the fact that this was a very strong bullish pattern to the top. Now, of course, if we do take our breakout target off of this um, W bottom here, what we can do is apply that to our breakout line. And you can see we just nearly missed that breakout target. But I would honestly consider this an execution. I would go ahead and say that when we wicked all the way up here that we hit the price target of this W. Now, not only that, though, if we go from our previous swing high to swing low event and draw a Fibonacci from those levels, swing high to swing low, one thing we can also see is that we saw a full breakout of a 1.618 Fibonacci extension, which is where a lot of our cryptos go up to before having to come back down and finding some support. All of this to go to say that what we're seeing right now was a beautiful breakout to the upside, the price target being met, and now we're seeing a nice retracement. And that is totally normal. So going forward, what we need to see is where does the support get established? How do we identify it's established? And when do we know to get in? Well, first and foremost, what we need to t take a look at is do our indicators say that we could be looking at support establishment happening very soon? Well, the biggest and the best indicator, in my opinion, is the RSI. And what we can see as clear as day on the RSI at the moment is that we put in a definitive bottom on November 12th and we put in a definitive bottom on November 14th. What that means is that you can just see clear as day that that's where a point of reversal happened. Now, looking at those same bottoms on the RSI, you can see that on this one, we set a higher low and on the RSI, we set a lower low. Now, this is textbook bullish divergence. So looking at the RSI, it says that we are already in a realm that support establishment could happen and it's setting itself up for a big move to the upside. So what that tells me is that the move to the upside will likely happen sooner than later. Now, if we start to look at where the price itself is and what it's doing on the short term, we can see that it is having a strong, strong, strong battle between two key levels of support. Now, this is going to be between the $3.15 level of support, and it is going to be between the $3.30 level of resistance. So what this tells us is that once we are able to get the breakout in either direction here, there is a strong likelihood that we do see a continuation in that direction. I think it is more likely that we do see the breakout to the top side, especially considering what we were seeing both from the RSI and if we look at the daily MACD, looking at this thing from more of a midterm perspective, one thing you can see here is that we did narrowly avoid, let's go ahead and zoom out here, we did narrowly avoid, you know, seeing some type of huge death cross happen. We saw the cross in an immediate recovery, and typically when we see these immediate recoveries, they are good signs that we will continue to the upside.
And so considering that we are seeing all of these things happen, both on the, the short term, where we are establishing them some support here, on the midterm, where we are seeing that bullish divergence, and on the long term, where we are seeing that, you know, avoidance of a death cross on the daily MACD, all of those things tell me that it does seem to be more likely that we break out of 331 and get the move to the upside. And so what I would be doing is looking to see, can we get a four hour or even just a one hour close back above $3.31? You can see back here that when we got these closes, things get explosive, right? Once we came back down, we established this level as resistance. Now that it's resistance, we need to be closing back above it. And every time that we would get a close above it, we would see the big move to the upside. Get the close above it, big move to the upside. Now, I'll know this one didn't last, but it's still the idea that that sets you in the motion to concede the continuous move to the top. And so what we can expect at this point is that clearing $3.31 puts us in the realm to get back up to some of these key levels at $3.40 to even $3.50. Now, looking at this thing from also the short-term perspective, we can see some type of W bottom forming as well, especially if we do put in a higher low here. Now, the breakout target on that high, on that W pattern would be looking something like if we took the distance from this midline that we put in when we set this uh, little wick here down to the bottom of the W, you can see that this distance applied to that midline puts us back up towards $3.46 to $3.50, which just so happens to line up perfectly with our previous level of resistance as provided by this big move here. All of these things to say is it does seem as if we do have the technicals and we do have the possibility to make a big move to the upside looking like a possible move of up to six to eight percent. But it's all gonna come down to can we clear 331 and flip this resistance as support? Now, if we're unable to clear 331, we need to be paying attention to $3.15. This is going to be an absolutely crucial level in order for us to hold, because if we don't, we definitely could be looking at more of a substantial fall to the downside. The reason being is that at that point, we are at the threat of this being some type of head and shoulders pattern playing out, which of course would have the breakout target of, if we go ahead and apply this, let's go here, which could have us, you know, working our way back down to possibly all the way, you know, back towards $2.50 to $2.60. Do I think that's going to happen? No, I don't. I think it is more likely that we would see some closes on our EMAs. You know, I think that our 20 EMA on the four hour chart or even our 50 EMA on the four hour chart or even on the daily charts, you know, we would start to see this 20 EMA work its way back up through here before we did see a big drop down back into our descending wedge. I think that's more likely. But what we know is that the loss of $3.15 puts us in the realm of seeing some continuous fall back towards even possibly $3. And that's not what we want to see. Of course, we want to see the move to the upside. So if you're looking to get in on Decentraland Mana, if you're looking to start to open up a trade, I would be looking for the closing on the hourly or even the four hourly back above $3.31. That historically has led us to see extensive growth to the upside. And based on the fact that we are seeing so much bullishness, even in the short, mid and long term, I think that goes to say that we definitely could be looking at a real nice move that you could take advantage of. And if you are a holder of Mana, you need to pay close attention to the interaction at $3.15 sense because if we were to lose it to bounce off of it and lose it or do something like that we are looking at an extensive fall likely back towards three dollars or even further below so overall that's all we're looking at for mana today just keep an eye on these levels 331 and 315 they're going to tell you everything that you need to know about where this price is going in the short term and by the time another move happens there will be another video on my channel so don't miss it by making sure you turn on that notification bell when you subscribe and like this channel so everyone gets a chance to see this that holds mana. But with that being said, I hope you all have an amazing end of your weekend and I will see you all tomorrow. Peace.